this morning is Mark 11, 1 to 11. When they were approaching the Jerusalem at Bethany and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find a colt tied there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it and will send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt and tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, someone of the bystander said to them, What are you doing? Untying that colt. They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. They then brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leaves branches that they had cut from the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of, the, of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when Hedy had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out into Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Uh, we celebrate today the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And uh, let's gather in prayer now. Let's pray. Living God, today we give thanks, for you are a great God. Your steadfast love endures for all eternity. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are present here now. The writer of the Psalms declares, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Living God, hear the praise of this community of faith as we seek to declare your name from the depths of our being. We praise you, for through Christ you make us new. We give thanks to you, for you are good. We give thanks to you for your steadfast love endures forever. Living Lord Jesus, we remember on this day how you entered the city of Jerusalem, how many people placed their coats and threw tree branches in your path and gave praise to God for you. Yet we also know that some days later, people from the same city either called for your death or deserted you. Forgive us for the ways we desert you and your path. Have mercy on us. Help us to lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are, trusting you to forgive what is sinful, to heal what is broken, to welcome our praises and to receive us as your own. And we pray in your name and for your sake. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, Far, so far has God removed our sins from us, the psalmist says. Jesus came preaching peace to those who are near and peace to those who are far off. My friends, we are free indeed to be forgiven people, to serve as forgiven people, to celebrate as forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Now, I believe we're going to sing. I'm just checking. In praise to God, the King of glory. No, we're not. We're doing... Yes, we are. <laughs> There's a few technical issues today. I'll just... You explain. <laughs> I'm sure many of you have sung this before and you're probably familiar... You probably are aware that it's, it's from the Jewish tradition. The tune is very much from the Jewish tradition. 
And quite often this kind of tune would be accompanied with dancing. I'm not going to make you get up and dance unless you want to. Uh, but what we might do, us musicians, is gradually increase the pace of the music, which is often what happened in those traditional songs. Now, if we fall off the tracks, your job is to just keep singing. Can you do it? Yes? Excellent. All right, let's go. Please be seated. People are just about to start dancing. Just about to start dancing. A warm welcome to each and every one of you again on this day, Palm Sunday. And in a few moments, I'm going to share with you the, some, some notices, but I want to share with you basically an early word which is sharing the journey as well. So if I can get, if you can get to the pictures, please. There we go. So yesterday, a number of, Jenny and I, along with Ray and Ken, were invited, and, and also along with Shigeg and Gera and their sons, Bazant Emmanuel, were invited to Lena and Ari's house. So some of you will know Lena and Ari, and their children, Mir Miriam, Abraham, and Paul. And um, what they asked us to do, as well as sharing the fact that they were in their own home, having cut, made this journey all the way from from uh, um, Mosul to, to Australia, they asked us to bless the house. And it, and it was really, really wonderful to do this. And I've occasionally done this before, but only very occasionally. And I found a, a really good order of service, which I think connects with today, because it was all about recognising Jesus' presence in different parts of the house. So there was a prayer for different parts of the house. So, and this is, of course, a very traditional service. It's one that's been used by Orthodox and Catholic, particularly for ages, although there's a version of it in the Church of Scotland prayer book. So, you know, that's pretty good. So, and, and I used a Celtic blessing at the end, which I'm going to share with you in a minute. But I just thought, well, let's just see if you can think you're thinking about different parts of the house. What might you pray for in the different parts of the house? And thinking about Palm Sunday, welcoming Jesus, the crowds welcoming Jesus. So at the entrance 
hall. That's me there doing the thing at the entrance. What do you think I'm going to be praying about there? I can hear various things, but I can't actually understand. What I prayed about, <laughs> I think you might have said, was welcome. People being welcomed in and out, you know, like people travelling in and out. The sense of welcome. Then we went to the sitting room. What do you reckon we prayed for there? Peace, rest, uh, unity was another part of the prayer. They were beautiful prayers, ancient prayers, but beautiful prayers. Then we got to the dining room. What do you reckon we prayed about there? <laughs> Eating, <laughs> giving thanks. <laughs> Hospitality. Hospitality. What was that one? Abundance. Abundance. Yep, yep, yep. And, and of course, as you know, as the Middle Eastern customs are, there was plenty to eat, wasn't there? <laughs> Shigeg. There was plenty to eat. Um, then we got to the what I said was the powerhouse of the house. Where do you reckon that was? Kitchen. Kitchen. That's right. <laughs> and what did we pray for there? Oh, you all got nourishment. Exactly. Well done, Alison. <laughs> nourishment. The sense that this and also a blessing on on the people who would who would cook, and prepare and serve. So that was another thing we prayed for. And then finally, I mean, there was a whole series of prayers, which I didn't use, but these are the ones we actually used. There was actually one, two, for, the, for, for bathrooms and the like, but we left that alone. Uh, <laughs> the, then we got to the, the bedrooms. What do you think we prayed for there? Peace and rest, exactly. And, and there's some wonderful old prayers that we don't often use much because we worship normally in the morning, and that's historically the case for Christians, of course, but there's some beautiful old prayers that are, that, that are sometimes used, talking about the, being protected from those things that are dark in the night. And of course, through the ages, you know, darkness has been, a, the, the night has been a scary place, especially when you haven't got street lights and the like. So the, the prayer included that. And then we concluded our little journey of welcoming Jesus into all parts of this home and praying for different aspects of the life of it with this little blessing. Bless this house and those within. Bless the giving and receiving. Bless the words and conversations. Bless the hands and recreation. Bless the sowing and our growing. Bless the coming and going. Bless all who enter and depart. Bless this house your peace in part. So I just thought that was worth sharing with you. And there's a couple of other photos there if you'd just like to share them, Abby. Yeah. That's upstairs in the ba bedrooms. And that's the, that's the little group. <laughs> yeah. So I just thought that was just, just a beautiful gift to us to be part of that. And I, if uh, Ari is watching this and, and Lena are watching this this morning, we again thank them for their hospitality and the chance to share in their life as a community. And it's something that's worth doing, brothers and sisters. If you're moving, maybe that's something you might like to do. You don't have to have me to come and do it. You can do it yourselves. Okay. Let's move on uh, to see what's coming up. Mainly what's coming up this week. So our Maundy Thursday service at 5 o'clock. Um, which, is the, um, which is sort of integrated with Messy Church, and we'll be having a meal, that ref a very simple meal, re which reflects the kind of food that they might have eaten at the Passover. And there'll be an opportunity for washing of feet and remembering different aspects of Jesus' journey during Holy Week. The Good Friday service will be that reflective service that we've often used of Tenebrae, putting out the candles. I've... Um, got some orders of service here with readers. I've had a couple of people volunteer to help with reading on Good Friday. Wouldn't mind two or three more people if you're able to be here and I can give you the order of service this morning. And Easter Sunday, of course, 9.30 communion. The next one's just a reminder a bit more about Messy Church. Um, that's just saying that Paul will be disappearing at some stage <laughs> on holiday. And yes, and I will be flying. So we'll... I think uh, Mike put that together. <laughs> and uh, just let, hold that for a tick. That's for next Sunday. And there is a roster for next Friday too, floating around too, if you want to have a check. 
Any other announcements just while we're travelling? No, okay. Let's listen now then to our second scripture reading, which is John's account of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Our reading is John 12, verses 12 to 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a doctor's donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when, when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that went before him when he called, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that they had performed these signs that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Lord, may your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Thanks, Dorothy. I thought it was worth hearing two versions of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem this morning because the Gospel writer Mark and the Gospel writer John have different things to say and to point out to us about the entrance of Jesus' to Jerusalem and its significance. Mark actually makes clear that Jesus stage managed the event, that he'd organised the cult in advance. Jesus, in other words, was making an intentional public statement by entering Jerusalem in the way he did. He knew that the event would draw attention to him. And if you think today about modern demonstrations, it was something like that. John, on the other hand, wants us to know that the disciples, while they were part of it, didn't really recognise what it all meant until after Jesus' death and resurrection. And also, picking up what I was talking about last week, you will note that um, at the end of that passage, you hear the Pharisees' frustration because they thought they were you know, kind of getting Jesus off the scene and now all of a sudden, the whole crowd, the whole town had gone out to meet him. What were they going to do? I'm going to come back to some of this a little later. But most of my focus this morning is around one word. Hosanna. Hosanna. What does Hosanna mean? <laughs> yeah, blank looks, that's all right. Because there's something intuitive about it for a start. I mean, I don't know about you, but whenever I've thought of Hosanna, I think of praising God, enthusiastically praising God. There are lots of hymns, we're singing them today with Hosanna in, it, in them. There's that part of the communion service, you know the bit. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Is that, in, is that the, what the Ukrainian choir are singing? I think it might be. So at the end of the service, did you see the Ukrainian choir singing at the beginning? I think they were singing some of this. That's called the Sanctus, in case you were, didn't know. Latin word, it's simply holy means Sanctus, or Sanctus means holy in Latin. So that, that's what it means. And, and it, that passage draws also from the book of Revelation with a huge crowd in heaven around the throne 
crying, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and, and, and is and is to come. So there's this sense with Hosanna of this intuitive understanding of praising God, of shouting, hooray. I mean, if you ask someone, what does hooray mean? You'd say, well, it means hooray. Hosanna to Jesus, Hosanna to God. But the people who, who shouted that word back there on that first day, were he, most of them would have been Hebrew speakers. And in Hebrew, the word Hosanna means save us. Save us. So they're, so they're declaring not only this, this word of praise from, the, from deep within them, but they're also saying, Jesus saves us. Or maybe, yeah, Jesus saves. Je Jesus save us. I was looking at my sermon from last year for this day. <laughs> um, I don't often do that, but I did actually this last week to see what I said. And I talked about the fact that Jesus entering Jerusalem reminded me a little bit of one of those old Hollywood westerns where, um, you know, the, the hero rides into town on the donkey or on a, probably on a flash horse. <laughs> and, and, there is, and there are doors shutting. <laughs> Some people coming out to welcome the hero and others looking through shutters, wondering what does this all mean? Who is this guy? What, is, what, what difference is he going to make to the town? And so I left you with the question last year of, and left me with the question of, would I have been one of the people that raced out to greet the hero? Or would I have been the person looking through the shutters? And then thinking about the word Hosanna and about Jesus saves, I started to think about heroes in films and books and thinking about how what do heroes do? How do they, what do they s save us from? If they're Doctor Who, who do they save us from? Probably the Daleks or those horrible stone angel things that are creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think? I mean, what, I mean you, you've all watched heaps and heaps of films. I mean, I wrote down things like, he hero, I've got a few heroes here that I thought about. You might think of some more. Frodo Baggins. What's that? Lord of the Rings? <laughs> and then, of course, if you have Frodo, you can't go, get away without Gandalf. Gandalf the Grey and then Gandalf the White. Or about Star Wars. Is any of this connecting? You've all seen Star Wars. Who's the hero in Star Wars? Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. <laughs> what about, did you, you read comics when you were young? Or do you, I mean, I've, I've got a bit... I, I used to watch a few of those, um, those Marvel and DC films and I've sort of gone off them a bit, although I did watch Black Panther. I thought that was quite good, but who are the heroes in a lot of those films? Batman, Superman, Superwoman, Wonder Woman, all these people. Can't keep up with them, frankly. Or more up my alley, what about Sherlock Holmes? Or Vera. Vera is one of my heroes. <laughs> The way she takes on difficult people, I love it. I couldn't do it, but she does. <laughs> what do they do? They fight monsters. They fight crime. They solve mysteries. Now, in some of the Western, or some of the Hollywood films, often they do it in a way that I feel slightly uncomfortable with. A whole lot of people kind of end up slightly dead. <laughs> <laughs> like on computer games. I, I'm not into computer games in a big way. My son has been. I'm, I'm, none of you would be, would you? I mean, you probably are, actually, but you're not going to tell anyone. But, but one of the things that I find difficult, I'm quite happy to play some of those games which are sort of like, you know, um, in Space Invaders or Pac-Man or those sort of things. But some of the more modern ones, they're quite violent. I, I find them really, you know, you're supposed to be the hero and what are you doing? Yet, mm, wiping people out. Now, I wonder what kind of hero the crowds thought Jesus was as he rode into town. I wonder what they thought Jesus was saving them from. 
or was going to save them for as he rode into town. They were praising him with their hearts and souls. They were acclaiming him as the ultimate hero, the Messiah, the anointed one of God. I guess we can guess what they might have thought. Some of them might have thought it had something to do with the restoration of Israel, with a freedom given, restored in Israel, like the way in which God had led the people of Israel on, in the Exodus out of slavery in Egypt, that they would be, they would re, be released from the bonds of slavery that, that they were experiencing there and then under the Roman rule. Perhaps for others, perhaps for people who reflected the, 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 the kind of the, the religious life of Israel, they were hoping that Jesus would restore the life, the, the faith life of the people of Israel. I wonder, though, whether any of them would have realised that the triumph, the salvation Jesus would bring, and this is the point that John's making in his unpacking of the package of the story, is that the salvation that Jesus would bring would involve a cross. For on the cross of salvation, Jesus would be revealed as what in the eyes of the world would seem to have been not a hero, but one who had been crushed. He would reveal salvation through weakness, through humiliation, and through death and defeat. And yet, as Easter Sunday makes clear, the cross reveals the power and the glory of the God who lo of love, who suffers for us and with us. On the cross and revealed in the resurrection, the forces of sin, darkness and death, the real monsters in the universe, are unmasked and defeated. On the cross and revealed in the resurrection, the utter and complete love of God is seen as that which will always be the victor. So for you and me, Jesus brings a word of hope for the future and for right now. That we are saved from those things that would lead us in directions other than the way of God, that we are forgiven, but also that we are freed to live lives of genuine love in the here and now. And part of that salvation is also that in Jesus we discover genuine hope. That as I said before, the monsters of this world, this universe, will not have the last word. Even the ultimate monster, death, will not get the last word. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And the people of God said, Amen. Hosanna, Amen. <laughs> and we're going to sing. And I'm not quite sure what we're going to sing, but, we're, but Robin will tell us. <laughs> <laughs> we're singing a song, a, a hymn that you will probably recognise, but we're singing it in a different way, um, using what we call a lyric video, so that the words of the hymn will be displayed for you. The version of the hymn is not an organ, but um, more like a kind of a folk band, um, and it's actually quite quiet, so um, we'll need your voices to add to the singing. So the lyrics will appear as they come due, and you'll, you'll pick it up. We 
Rejoice, the Lord is King. Your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph forevermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. I say. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's continue in prayer. Let's pray. And we're praying for the world now and praying for each other. Let's pray. Loving and Holy Spirit of God, hear our prayers for the world to whose service you have called us in all its longing for peace, for justice, for reconciliation. Hear our prayers today for those who struggle against tyrannies, those damaged by natural disasters or blight, caused by others' greed, those forced out from their communities to seek refuge elsewhere, for aid agencies, peacemakers. And we pray, O oh Lord, we pray that wisdom and truth be shown by governments and leaders. Loving God, we believe you ache out of love for this world and its peoples. And we so pray for the release, and so we pray for the release of the dispossessed, the falsely imprisoned, the undervalued, the cruelly undernourished, the exploited, the anxious, the miserable, and the sick. We hold before you those with whom we live, particularly those who are enduring struggles and disease at this time. And some we hold before you, we know, are in their last days of their journey in this world. And in the silence we name them.
and with these, position, with these petitions, we give thanks for saints and martyrs through the centuries and the many people forgotten by us but known to you who have challenged injustice and discrimination, given voice to those unnoticed and unheard, and helped to create communities where all are valued, communities of hope, communities of faith. And we offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, and we pray the prayer together that he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And in response to the good news of Jesus who saves us and frees us and gives us new beginnings and, and genuine hope, let us make our offering. Loving God, we bring to you our gifts, our lives, our very selves. Take and use us as expressions of praise. May the gifts we have, the people we are, indeed exclaim Hosanna. Praise to you and thanksgiving for the salvation we have in Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As we move to the conclusion of our service this morning, we start to focus on the events of the week that, that are about to unfold. And so let's pray a prayer related to the coming days of Holy Week, and then let's listen to a short passage of scripture in which Jesus unpacks the significance of this week. Let's pray. Inspire our hearts, O God, to follow where Christ walked, for Christ has marked us as his own. Let us all take new willingness to carry our cross and be led through sacrifice and suffering, but also to the glory and triumph of the risen life of the Saviour. Grant us all your good graces through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, our last reading this morning is uh, from Mark 10, verses 32 to 34. Jesus took the twelve disciples 
took the twelve aside and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise again. So we sing again. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Brothers, go from this place with song, <laughs> singing hosannas, but go in the power of the Holy Spirit to walk the way of Jesus and to share the good news that Jesus brings life and hope and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.